Hello, this is Doug Dosh. I'm the ground supervisor here at Brethren Village, and we're going to do a update on what the grounds team is doing for, our, for the spotted lanternflies that are on campus. To give you some history on the spotted lanternfly, uh, they are native to China, India, and Indonesia, um, and they were introduced into Korea, which has been a major uh, impact into Korea. Uh, as far as an invasive species there. They were found in Pennsylvania in Berks County in 2014, and that was tr traced to a shipping crate, a wooden shipping crate of a product that was shipped into the area and left outside. Uh, the spotted lanternflies are great to lay their egg sacs on anything that um, is wood, metal, stucco, anywhere. They, they are not, uh, particular about where they lay their eggs. That's how they got introduced to the area. We as a team here, Brethren Village is a licensed facility uh, by the state to apply insecticides, herbicides uh, to the grass, to the shrubs. Uh, with that, uh, there's three of us on campus that have our applicator certifications. So we have Brian Norton, uh, is one of our grounds team members that is uh, certified and also Shelly Troop. Uh, so what happens with that is we need to get uh, credits and education on a regular basis. So we have been getting information on the spotted lanternfly since about 2016 as we go to uh, classes and um, different events that we get uh, credit. It's actually last fall we actually found some adult lantern flies on campus. So over the winter, we were starting to form a plan on what we were going to do uh, for the spotted lantern flies when they showed up in mass. So let me just go over the life cycle of what the spotted lantern flies are. They start out, right now we are in the adult stage that is laying egg sacs. So they are in the trees feeding right now. Uh, they will lay their eggs over the which will overwinter, and then it goes through a five cycle of life of four cycles of nymphs, uh, starting out small with black and white spots, and eventually going to red and white spots, and then going to the adults, which you're noticing now. Okay, so we first noticed adults on campus the first week of August which we started doing some spray applications to start minimizing the impact on campus. So what is the impact to the campus? Well, primarily it's a, um, it's a nuisance issue for us. We are not fruit growers. Uh, they are attracted to apple trees, fruit, uh, different fruit trees, grapes, can be very detrimental to those types of industries. Uh, they can also be detrimental to trees but not them themselves. They do not kill trees. What happens is right now they're feeding um, and what that causes is you'll find, like the tree we're at right now, if you look in the sunlight, you can actually see honeydew dripping down, which is their waste coming out from feeding on the sap of the tree. That'll also get on the tree and cr create a sticky substance, like a black, they call it black sooty mold. Uh, that attracts other insects, which then would damage the tree. So what we're trying to do is eliminate, uh, limit the uh, nuisance of the honeydew dripping and also the impact of other insects coming in. You can still see a lot of activity. So even though we're spraying, you're going to see um, activity on the trees. One of the, uh, the reason for that is, is because we use a mixture of two different insecticides, one for a knockdown when we spray, and then the other one is a systemic which gets into the tree and then as they feed it'll affect it. And as you can see, we're also doing some other things, some fun experiments. One of the things I came across, if you notice, there's a, a pie pan here with uh, some liquid in, which is uh, water and Dawn dish soap. Um, and there, there's quite a few in there. It seems like they get attracted to that. As far as residents go, I get a lot of, I've been getting calls on, well, they're on my patio and, and things. So what could you do as residents at Brethren Village? Well, if you find them on your patio, this is a great weapon, okay? Just 
kill them. <laughs> That's what we need to do. We can't spray around patios or anything like that because they don't feed there. Um, the spotted lanternfly is a plant hopper, so they flutter, but they don't fly. I, I look at this pest as being very similar to our Japanese beetle. Uh, the only difference is, is the Japanese beetle, you really see a lot of damage on the trees right away because they actually chew the leaves. Uh, Japanese beetles have been around for years. We've had to treat them every year to, to limit their impact. And I see the spotted lanternfly being a very similar type of problem. Uh, it's something that we're going to go through um, you know, every year and try and minimize the impact uh, from them. I don't see that they're going to disappear anytime quickly. One of the things I always appreciate when the residents let us know what's going on. You know, we've been monitoring trees. We know pretty much where they're at on campus. You can always feel free to let us know things, but I'm not going to reply back if you call about spotted lanternflies because we know they're on campus and we are, you know, working at treating them. We had to go through a course to get permitted uh, for, um, for our vehicles. So we can, we need to inspect our vehicles as we move from area to area so we don't spread them. Uh, they are hitchhikers. They love, especially in the nymph stage and even in the adult stage, they love to get on your vehicle and travel around. Uh, they also will lay egg sacs in underneath wheel, well, wheel wells and things of vehicles. We're gonna look at trees. If we find any egg sacs that we can reach, uh, what you can do with them is you can take a plastic baggie and some hand sanitizer, put some hand sanitizer in a plastic bag, and then you can take a simple tool as a plastic uh, knife and you can scrape these off into the plastic bag. Um, so if you find any of these, you can easily scrape them off, put them in, a bag and then just throw the bag away. One of the things that uh, we also do here as a grounds team is we do tree injection. The company we use is called ArborJet. They have insecticides that we can inject into trees that will be very effective on the spotted lanternfly. Uh, our plan for that is to, we're noting where the spotted lanternflies are heavy on larger trees that are harder to spray, similar to this one here. Um, and we're going to start that in the spring. The chemical, that w the insecticide that we put into the tree uh, will last up to 18 months. Uh, so we can start in the spring. That'll help for the next life cycles of the spotted lanternfly. That'll give us an extended period for next year. So we're going to start that in the spring on trees that we feel are high probability of having nymphs on. So Brian's going to go ahead and show you how we do this. We drill holes in the tree and we set a plug. This is the plug. It's very small. Uh, this allows for the needle that we put in. It's like an IV. Uh, it allows for the needle to go in and creates a cavity for us to be able to force the uh, uh, insecticide into the tree. This also helps for the tree to grow over. In, in a year, you don't even know that the holes were there also allows us to retreat. So it goes by the diameter of the tree at a certain height. Uh, you can see Brian sticking the needles in now into the plugs. Uh, that'll, the, the, the diameter determines how much uh, insecticide we put in. We can also do fungicides and, in, and fertilization into trees. So we'll also be treating, we've been treating trees uh, for health reasons with this system. So once he has the needles in, he'll open a valve on each one. And then each of the bottles uh, has the chemical in and it simply need to put pressure into the bottles. Um, so he is using just basically a standard type tire pump with a special end on it and then he'll release the insecticide out of the bottle with the pressure. It's hard to see, it's moving slowly through the tube. You can kind of see some air bubbles maybe if I get one here. Yeah. Like right there you can see the color 
a little bit. And it takes a few minutes for it to uh, work itself in and it'll, uh, the tree will draw it right up through the whole tree. So with all our planning that we've been doing over the last year, I feel pretty confident that uh, we'll be able to control spotted lanternflies. Like I said, I don't think we're going to eliminate uh, spotted lanternflies unless they were to move on to other areas, uh, but it's something we'll uh, definitely keep an eye on every year, and we will be doing these similar processes uh, and plans that we have in place um, uh, from year to year. Uh, and as things come available, uh, we'll keep you updated on if there's anything new and things that uh, and things that we'll be doing in the future. So, uh, just thanks to everybody for what you do around BV to help the place look good. Uh, it's like we all work together as a as a community and a team. So I appreciate everything. Thank you.